CataractCoach.com, your last surgery before graduation. Attention, graduating resident fellows, can you now achieve this level? You know, in the USA, our surgical training ends usually June 30th is the end of the academic year. So you're done with your residency and fellowship at that point, and you're ready for your new practice and your new job and your future career. You're ready. Well, your skills are ready, aren't they? And this is a video to have you ask yourself, are you there yet? And so this is a routine cataract case, but you need to know how to do a beautiful routine case. So let's go through this. Now, step one is look at the draping. No lashes in the way. We used a lot of copious irrigation at the beginning to get some stuff off the tear film. Good fill of viscoelastic. The incision is so important. Let's get a really nice incision here. He's using a diamond keratome, making a good single pane incision, getting to the appropriate width. And that's a fantastic incision. Notice how it barely nicks the limbal vessels. That's important. You want that. That's going to ensure great long-term sealing of the incision. Here's the rexus. A lot of residents have a hard time with getting the rexus done. So let's take a look at this capsule rex and see what we can do. Can you achieve this? Are you able to do this rexus? Notice how the instrument floats in the incision, the pivoting technique here. The eye stays in primary. It's not going off your screen here. The rex is the appropriate size. It's five millimeters in diameter, nice and round, and it's well centered. Look at the Purkinje reflexes in the center of the caps rexus and measured five millimeters on the nose. It's a good looking rexus. I'll take it. Now, balance all solution on a blunt candidate for some hydrodissection. You know, the big differentiator in your practice is not knowledge. All ophthalmologists are smart. It's not even bedside matter because all ophthalmologists, they all want to be good people and help patients and be nice and sweet. But the challenge and the differentiator is surgical skill. And we got to be honest here. There's a bell curve of surgical skill. And the question is, do you have the drive and determination to do what it takes to climb that bell curve? Look at that chop. Cleanly done, one half the nucleus is pulled out of the way, second half it brought up with the vacuum and emulsified very easily at the iris plane, minimal amount of phaco energy. Very stable fluidics in the eye as well. So when you finish your training, remember what you learned in those years of residency and even in that fellowship, it's just the beginning. You really can't be an expert cataract surgeon unless you've done a thousand cataract cases. And at the very best, 500 cases is at best halfway up the learning curve. So you've got to put that pressure on yourself to be better and better every single case you do. You've got to learn from every single case. And you've heard it here countless times. You've got to be your own toughest critic. You need to watch game day footage. You need to record your surgeries and go back and watch them and ask yourself, what did I do well? And what needs work? What are any problem steps that I need to address? So you see at the end, there's a small little piece of epinuclear material stuck in the incision. So I use some bounce salt solution to push that away just to make it easier to grab here with our coaxial irrigation aspiration probe. Notice how we do this. The eye stays in primary, though the only way, uh, only time I, mind it, I don't mind it out of primary is there, that sub-incisional, to really access that with the coaxial. Sometimes requires you move the a little bit out of primary. Nice, clean capsule bag. You've done your homework ahead of time. You've done the calculations. You've done appropriate measurements for the astigmatism. You're going to be able to deliver a beautiful outcome as patient. Here's some capsule bag polishing just to make sure it's extra pretty. You really want to minimize any inflammatory load in this eye. And you can see that's a really nice looking Rexus, totally clean bag. Let's fill it up with our cohesive viscoelastic and let's get this case done. Now, I'm gonna tell you another secret. When you start in practice somewhere, you're going to have to do some proctored cases. Just because you finished a residency doesn't mean you're capable. And so when you go to a new center, a new hospital, a new facility, and they're gonna want you to show that you have the ability to do surgery. So yes, you'll be granted temporary privileges, but then you'll have to do a handful of proctored cases while an established surgeon watches you and evaluates you to determine, are you capable? Are you competent? And you know, you want to be more than just competent. You want to be fantastic. So I want to tell you, your, your learning is just beginning. Even though your residency and fellowship is just now finishing, it'll be done in the course of about a week or so, this is the beginning 
and you need to keep the pedal to the metal. You need to keep going forwards and onwards and upwards and keep getting better and better at surgery every case you do. I want you to be able to look back at your videos five years from now and say, wow, I've made such an incredible amount of progress. And that's definitely something that I still espouse to this day. I wanna be better and better every time I operate. And I wanna give the very best to my patients. And I think you can achieve it too. Here, look at the end of the case there. That's a really nice overlap. Good five millimeter rexus, overlap in that six millimeter optic, a little bit of triumph alone. A lot of people ask me about this. It's just to help quell any inflammation. I know there's no vitreous prolapse. It's not what it's for. It'll only last for a couple of days inside the anterior chamber. It won't last too long. It'll help quell the inflammation. Then I also put in some antibiotics, some preserve-free moxifloxacin. Here's a Wexel sponge soaked in some tetracaine to help keep the eye nice and numb. And now we're also going to, of course, treat the underlying astigmatism. You notice how the main phaco incision was placed on the steep meridian. This patient had a beautiful outcome. And I know you have the drive and determination to be able to deliver this high quality level of care. You may not be there yet, that's okay. Keep working hard, and come on, keep watching cataractcoach.com. Thanks for watching.